on stage from the National Academy of Education in Moscow, Ilya Zakharov. Okay, so actually I want to talk about a lot of stuff. So let us have a little bit of structure in advance. Um, it will help you and me as well. Uh, under any real study, there is a huge, big scientific problem. I will try to share mine with you. Only after that, we will return to study, to our methods, maybe to some of our conclusions, and if we're lucky, we can return back to big problem. This would be the best to science and to the people. So what is this big question, big problem? It is uh, the tough one. How does the brain actually work? I don't know. And uh, to put it uh, straight, I think that these words are more or less true. If the brain were so simple, we could understand it. We would be so simple, we couldn't. <laughs> but given that, given that, scientists are still curious. We still want to try. What can we do? Let's try to uh, study something very complex, our own human brains. And let's try to find something that makes us human. And for a lot of people, um, we would agree that maybe intelligence is something that makes us the most different from any other living creatures. Here's the problem. If we're talking about intelligence, it can be understood really different. My, my favorite definition is that intelligence is adaptation. We actually want to adapt to the, to the world we live in. Different creatures can do that in different ways, but if we're talking about humans, our way of adaptation is to solve problems. We live in a very complicated world, and if we want to succeed, we want to solve problems. So this is intelligence, solving problems. Okay, so now let's go to the study. What actually makes us smarter? I'm not the first one, of course, who have been uh, addressing this question. And actually, from 90s, uh, there's uh, the thing that we know, that our brain are lazy. Have you heard about that, that our brain are lazy? Actually, it means, in terms of science, that it was shown that if we're talking about glucose consumption, people with higher scores on their cognitive tests show lower glucose consumption if we're talking about positron emission scanning. If we put this simple, it just means that our brains are lazy. We want to save energy anytime we can do that. And my particular question in my study was how does the brain save this energy? To address this question, let's remember that the brain is a network. You have heard that it's billions of neurons, there are thousands of connections of each other, and maybe this is one of the most complicated network in the world. But there's a wonderful tool from mathematics that can help us understand the networks. It's called graph theory, and actually it's pretty simple. You just have nodes, these things are called nodes, and you have edges, something that connects the nodes. So these are the edges. Given these two concepts, you can tell a lot about the network. Let's go to some examples. Uh, do you recognize this one? Actually, this is a network, and it can give us very important information. Uh, network should be balanced. If there are a lot of nodes and not so many edges, network can be unbalanced and we can have some problems. For example, uh, the kinds of the problems you have, for example, in Japanese metro. Fortunately, in my experience at least, Berlin metro is much better than Japanese. Much better even than Moscow one. Uh, so, this is actually a feature of the network and this feature is called density. On your left, you can see the dense graph, the dense uh, network. On your, light, on your right, it's sparse network. Can it be that the brain tries to optimize density in order to make us smarter? Well, this is a possibility. Let's consider this one. Another example and another feature. Uh, this is the map of the internet, the web. Maybe one of the most important network in our modern world. And actually, what do we want from the web? We want it to be fast. We want to download films or anything really fast. How can we achieve that? Given that actually, this is actually the map of the only part of the nodes that are uh, connected to the mm, web, we want actually uh, the signal to find the shortest path from one node to another. And um, it should be not only a short path, it should be also very stable. We don't want uh, something to interfere with uh, our signal. So we have to have a lot of parallel distribution of information. 
Can it be that actually this is the feature of the network as well? It's called path lengths. Pretty straightforward, actually. I like graph theory for that. And we can find different paths from one node to another. If there are a lot of short paths, well, it could be good for our brains. This is a possibility. Let's consider this as well. Another example, maybe, well, not maybe. Here it's the most important network for us humans, social network. Uh, now it's visible. This is a part of my social graph. Uh, you know that you can um, make your social graphs. And actually, we can. Uh, modern science gives us a lot of um, information about how these graphs work. For example, have you heard about six handshake theory? It means that uh, it states that every person is connected to any other person in the world just through six handshakes. Actually, uh, we're connected through special people where these people are called hubs and uh, they just socialize a lot and according to this theory and i'm pretty sure that it is i'm much closer to any one of you in the audience as more than you think uh, why do i know that why do i know that let's consider who can be these hubs i don't know whether this is a good or bad but i'm just one handshake to putin he's he has handshaked with angela merkel and in the average, each of you is one, maybe two handshakes to her. This makes us really close. We are living in a small world. And this feature of uh, the network uh, is called small world index. Maybe the brain um, is small world for neurons. And that can make us smarter. So these are three features that we were interested in in our study. What actually have we done? Uh, we took 200 participants, we collected their brain imaging data, then we calculated some brain networks, some graphs, uh, calculated features of these graphs, density, small world index, path lengths, and we gave uh, people some tests. We um, uh, measured their intelligence level with uh, cognitive tests, uh, and we were just interested in whether any of this stuff are uh, correlated with each other. Well, what have we found? is um, that our brains, and we're not the first to find, to find that, our brains are actually really densely packed. Uh, there are a lot of edges between the nodes. And we really live in a small world. Our neurons are really living in the small world inside our heads. But, well, this doesn't make us different. Um, we're really the same in terms of density and small world indexes. However, if we're talking about path lengths, we found that people with, in average, shorter paths actually, actually are a little bit smarter, only a little bit smarter than those who are who not that uh, short in their mm, neurons communication. And that does make us maybe closer to an internet when they think. Uh, as a scientist, I can't help uh, being complicated. I uh, must say about some limitations. IQ is not all if we're talking about uh, the intelligence, of course. Actually, brain data is really noisy and there's a lot of assumptions I don't want to start talking about. Uh, where does it leave us if we're talking about the big problem? Well, we're still there. If our brains were so simple, we could understand it. We would be so simple, we couldn't but we won't stop trying. Thank you.